everybody, I'm Dave Thomas and today I am building the U.S. Army Patriot. This is a scale model of uh, the famous air defense missile uh, used extensively during the first Gulf War. And there have actually been several models by lots of different uh, model making companies. And so this is the Estes version. Um, I have the Lock 1 version elsewhere on this channel as well. So if you start collecting Patriots, these are two good places to start. Right, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Okay, let's get our instruction and parts list here. Also check and make sure there's nothing in the instruction sheet. Alright, so first of all we have two body tubes. All right, one is shorter than the other. Oh, I lied, they're both the same size. Okay, self-stick decals. Some more self-stick decals. Okay, plastic nose cone. Um, this is, a, they're calling it the yellow body tube there. Okay, we have two tube couplers. And then in a small package, this contains the fins, the centering rings, motor mount rings, motor retention clip, and launch lug, as well as the parachute and shock cord. And then all by itself left in here we've got the motor mount tube. Okay, so it looks like we have everything that we're supposed to have here. And I'm going to clear away most of this and we will get started on the build. The first thing we'll do is assemble the motor mount. And so we're going to need the motor mount tube, the retaining ring, thrust ring, engine clip, and then the centering rings here. And these can just be popped out. If you have difficulty popping them out, then just take your hobby knife and cut off those little nubs there. All right, that was fairly easy. Okay, so now we're gonna make some measurements on here. So grab pencil and a ruler, All right, and we're going to mark one end as aft, and this will become the origin for all our measurements. So our first measurement is half an inch or 13 millimeters from the aft end. We'll just make a little mark there. Get this all lined up properly. Okay, so 13 millimeters is right there. I'm going to extend this a little bit because our uh, engine clip is going to go right down over all these marks. So you want them wide enough that you'll be able to see them once the clip is in place. All right, next is 3.2 centimeters, or 32 millimeters. There, and then we'll have 6.4 centimeters, or 2.5 inches. Okay, so that's going to be right there. Okay, so at that furthest one, we're going to take a hobby knife and just cut a little slit there, about an eighth of an inch or three millimeters, and this is where the engine clip will go. Right, so that's going to insert right there, and as I said, this is going to partially cover the marks we made, so that's why I made them a little bit wider. Okay, and then we're going to take 
this ring here, the white one, and this is just going to hold the clip in place so it doesn't come loose. And this is going to go at that 3.2 uh, centimeter mark there. So I'm just going to pull a little bit past the mark and then using either white glue or wood glue we can go ahead and put that on. I'm going to use white glue for it because it's going to flow a little bit more and this really isn't a structural piece. It's not going to have a lot of physical strain on it. Okay, but that'll help it flow around underneath there. All right, and then we're just going to move this back up till we reach that mark right there. And then the excess glue, just take your finger and smooth that into a fillet. And then you can even put any excess on the other side. Again, this isn't critical. This is not a stress-bearing part. Okay, next we're going to do the motor ring or the uh, engine block here. And so um, this one I am going to use wood glue for because this is a potential stress point. You can still use the white glue. Um, if that's all you've got, it'll work fine. Wood glue uh, dries a little bit quicker though usually and it is stronger. So I'm just going to put a little bit in here. We want a nice even bead, and so I'm just going to use my finger and smooth that around like so. And we don't want a lot of excess because um, we don't want a bunch of glue dripping down inside the motor tube. So now we'll just take the engine block ring, pop that in through the glue, and that's going to rest right on top of the engine clip. Now be careful, it's going to tend to try and dip down further opposite the engine clip, and we don't want that. This should be an even space all the way around the inside where it meets the ring. Okay, that can be drying. Okay, now for these next two rings, I'm just going to dry fit these first. Okay, so the one that has the big notch in it, that's going to go on the aft end. And go to that mark there that we made at 13 millimeters. And this notch should line up with the engine clip there. So this should all be going straight and straight through the notch. Okay, and like we did before, I'm going to pull that just a little bit farther down. And we'll put glue around it. Okay, and now I'm going to move that back up to our mark. And let that go right into the glue. And mainly here we just want to make sure now that it's perpendicular and we've got the same space all the way around. All right, a little bit of an angle. If you can't quite get it straight, it's not going to hurt it. But we want this as perpendicular as we can. All right, and then again, go ahead, um, use your finger to smooth this into a fillet. All right, try not to get it on the engine clip, though. Okay, and then on the other side, you can use excess glue from your finger. Go ahead and drag it around as well. If you run out, just get a little more glue from your bottle there. But we want to fill it on both sides. Again, try to keep from getting any glue in the way of the engine hook there. All right, for the forward ring, this is going to go right up to the engine clip there. So right about in that spot. Okay, and we're actually going to pull it forward here. What are we going to do? Okay, they're actually pulling this forward a bit um, so that it's even with this part of the tube. Um, I actually prefer to put it down here so it kind of acts as a stop for the um, engine clip. You can do this in either fashion. It's not going to hurt anything to have that ring moved a little bit. 
And I, I actually prefer mine back a little bit so that if it does move on it, it doesn't just break off the end. All right, here it doesn't matter if you get any if you get glue onto the uh, engine clip. And I'm going to save that blob of glue on my finger here. Okay, I'm going to move this so it's just coming into contact with the engine clip there. And now I'm going to take this and make another fillet all the way around the forward side. Okay. So now I'm going to let this entire assembly dry before we try putting it inside the body tubes. While the motor mount is drying, we can put the body tubes together here. Now, I don't know why Estes made this this way. Um, because, alright, each of these tubes is about just over six and a half inches long. Alright, and then the yellow one here is about three and a quarter which means they could have just used a single 18 inch body tube for all this. So I don't know why they did it this way. Maybe they just had a preponderance of cut body tubes. But the end result is we have to put them all together. Okay, so we're going to take these two couplers first of all. Use a small ruler here. Um, and we're just going to find the middle of these and uh, mark that. So. That's going to be at 19 millimeters, or 1.9, or for you who are not metrically inclined, three quarters of an inch. Okay. okay, then we'll do the same thing here with the other coupler. So also at 19 millimeters there. Now we're going to start by putting the couplers into the two white tubes here. All right, and so for both of these it's going to look the same. Right, so we're just going to put a bead of glue right on the inside. Right, go ahead and spread that out a bit. Okay, and then take the coupler, find your halfway mark there, and we'll just insert that in. All right, give it a little twist as we go until we get to that mark there. It's right under that little piece of lint. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing with the second white tube. I got that a bit more spread than the last one, so I don't need to use my finger. All right, put that one up to the mark as well. Okay, now you can see in there there's some glue pushed forward. If you want, you can just take your finger and smooth that around inside there. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here. Yeah, see, that one's actually kind of dripping a bit. Some people say I use too much glue. I say I don't want these things coming apart during the ejection charge. I'm going to let those um, set and dry for just a few minutes before we put them together with the other tubes. The glue on these is dry enough that the couplers aren't going to shift on me as we put these together. So now, um, choose which one of these is going to be the bottom. And I'm just going to write aft on the inside of this so that I know that's going to be the bottom of the rocket there. Okay, so on the middle tube that also has the coupler in it, we're going to add a bead of glue right inside here. All right, I'll try to use a little bit less than I used going in the, the first ones. All right, go ahead and spread that around a bit. Okay, and now we're just going to put this on here. I'm just going to twist it together. If you want to be really OCD about it, you can line up the spirals, but you don't have to. Okay, and now I'm just going to hold this for about 30 seconds so that the glue doesn't push the joint back apart. 
and it will come back and do the yellow tube. Alright, now we're going to do the same thing with the yellow tube here. I'm just going to put another bead of glue on. Okay, go ahead and spread that around the inside. And now this will go on as well. Twist that so we get a good grip. Okay, and now once again, I'm just going to hold this together for about 30 seconds to make sure that it doesn't try and push the two tubes apart. Next, we need to cut out the fin marking guide, and that's right here. Now, that when we cut this out, that's going to also cut out the instructions here. Um, for part of the motor mount installation. Okay. Um, now, if that's the case, you can either photocopy this and cut this out, or just make note of what you need to know here, and then cut it out anyway. Okay. So I can see they're they're making a, a ring of glue forward to that. I know how to do that, and we'll talk about that later in the video. All right. So I'm just going to cut mine out. Use your hobby knife or scissors for this. Okay, now notice this also has the shock cord mount on it, so after we use it for marking the tube, don't throw this away. You want to have a piece of masking tape handy here. Okay, and we're going to wrap this around down here at the aft end. So that's part of the reason I marked this as aft so I don't forget which end is which. Okay, and then I'm going to put a piece of masking tape across this making sure that it hits the edges so that this does not slide as we're making our marks. Okay, now it does mean I'll have to come back and I'm going to do this now. I'm going to peel this up just a little bit. All right, I'm going to make my launch lug mark here. I'm going to mark it with an LL here so I know that it's not a fin line. I'll just come up here beyond the tape. I can put that back for now. Right, now go ahead and just mark each fin line going around. All right, now I'm going to carefully peel my tape back off. Okay, and that way I've still got this for use for the shot cord anchor that we'll put in later on. All right, now you can either use a door frame or a drawer edge, or a tube marking guide like this one. This is made by Estes, and it's a, essentially a whole bunch of door frames in one package here. Um, if you're going to make a lot of model rockets, this is well worth the investment. Okay, so here we're going to line up our fin lines and launch lug lines. Now our fins, if we take a look here, just to get an idea of how long our lines need to be. Okay, so the root edge of our fins is going to be about 8 centimeters. And so if I put that on here, that's about up to here. I'm going to extend these um, probably up to around here or so. I like to have the extended lines because it makes lining the fins up easier. Okay, so it doesn't have to be exact, but you want to have your line longer than the actual um, root edge. Okay, here I'm just trying to figure out which one of these edges is going to be the best. Looks like that one. Okay, so here I'm just going to draw that line in and then just move to each of the successive ones. Now 
in my launch lug line, I'm going to run it all the way up the length of both of the white tubes. You don't necessarily have to go this far, but again, it makes it easier to line it up later on. And you can always erase it or paint over it. Alright. Fill in my thumb mark there. Alright, so we've got all those lines. Okay, um, we're almost ready to do the fins, but I think at this point we are ready to put the motor mount in. Okay, now you can do this um, in two ways. So, according to the instructions, they want us to put the motor mount in before we put the fins on. Okay, um, which is fine, it's the way most people do it. Um, there is an advantage though if you wait before you do that. Um, you don't have the, the off-center weight rolling around as you're trying to put fins on. Some people that's a problem, others it's not. Uh, but the So that's an advantage of not putting this in until after the fins. However, um, if you get a little sticky spot or something like that where you're putting this in, um, and suddenly that gives, you might break a fin that way. So for this model, I'm just going to go ahead and do it the way that they show here. But just be aware that there are um, that's not the always the best way to do it. All right. Now, the reason I wanted to get my lines on here first also was I prefer to have my engine clip at the same line as my launch lug, so that when it's on the launch pad, this stays out of the way of the clips. Okay. Now, we also want to check... Okay, so when this is glued into place, the uh, motor mount should be flush with the body tube here. All right. Now that part that we cut out um, was showing how to do this. and I'm going to take it one step farther. So here you can use a, a piece of scrap balsa. Um, I really like these uh, cotton applicators. They're, they're basically extended Q-tips. Um, in a pinch you can use regular Q-tips too. I'm going to open up my wood glue. You can also use white glue with this. Alright, so if this is going to be flush, like that, all right, so that means we want our glue to be where this ring is, or at least um, probably a little bit below it, so we push it into the glue. So I'm going to measure this using my thumb, so that now, that's when I put this in, <coughs> I'm going to measure this using my thumb as a stop here. So I'll put the end of the applicator there and my thumb, I'm going to put my thumbnail right against the shaft there. And then when I put glue on this, I'm just going to run it up straight through the middle until I reach my thumb there and then I'm going to bring it up against the side and rotate that glue around there. And it may take more than one application. But that way you're not sliding both rings through the same ring of glue. And you'll get a stronger mount that way. Okay, so I'm just going to run this all the way around. Check inside, that looks like a nice even ring. Okay. Now I'm going to put this in, but not all the way yet. Okay, so I'm going to leave that hanging out there, and now I'm going to put another ring of glue right inside the aft edge here. And I can rotate that around. Okay, and now I'm just going to push this in, making sure I line up the launch lug line with my engine mount. And use a flat surface like a ruler to make sure that's flush. Okay. But now you can see where it's pushed through the glue there. And we've got a little bit of a gap around the edges there. Once the initial glue dries, then I will put a fillet of glue around that edge to strengthen it even more and also help seal it. So if, sometimes if you have those gaps, and if you have gaps up in here that you can't see to fix, um, when the ejection charge goes off, it'll, part of it will leak out this way. Uh, instead of blowing everything forward like it's supposed to. And we don't want that to happen. 
So I'm going to let this glue dry for a little while and then I'll put a fillet around that entire inside ring. Okay, and in the meantime we're going to get to work on the fins. For the fins, what the instructions show are basically the minimum treatment. Okay, so what you want to do is first um, sand the faces of the fins and you can do this while it's still intact in the sheet here. Now if your fins came dislodged during shipping or whatever, that's fine. You can just do this to each fin. But I'm going to take some 150 grit sandpaper here and just sand the faces. Okay, get that nice and smooth. Turn it over to the other side. Once you've got the sanding done, then go ahead and take your hobby knife and cut through the residual bits of wood. Okay, and then just gently tap these out. If something's still sticking, go back and cut it again. Missed one there. Okay. And now go ahead and stack these all together. And then take a, just a flat piece of sandpaper here. Um, this is 150 grit again, which is kind of a good general purpose coarseness. Alright, so stack these up and just go through and do the cumulative edges there. And this is just going to get rid of the little nubbins here that were left and some of that soot from the cutting process. Do this on each of the edges. Okay, so that's kind of the minimal amount of fin treatment to put these on. What I'm going to recommend are two things. Um, one is round this leading edge so that it's not square anymore, but rounded, that will give it um, better aerodynamics. And then also, balsa is a really coarse grained wood, and so when you paint this, the, the grain is still going to show through that unless you do a lot of paint and a lot of sanding. And so you can preempt some of that by treating it with a sanding sealer. Now before I put the sanding sealer on, I'm going to go ahead and do my shaping here. All right, and again, 150 grit sandpaper is kind of a good general purpose sandpaper. And I'm going to start by simply knocking down the corner edges here. So I'm just going to sand those edges over. Right, and trade and do the other side. Okay, so if you're looking cross section now, this is starting to round. Right, and we just now continue doing this with your sandpaper. Um, if you don't have a sanding tee like this, you can just use a, a small piece of hardwood as a block, or you can just use it in your fingers. But usually having a, a flat surface is going to make this more uniform. Okay, so I'm just rotating my wrist as I sand. And you may have to change how you hold this so that you get even pressure here. And then just check periodically in cross section. So this should be fully rounded so you can still see here a flat spot. We're not there yet. And you want the rounding to be equal on both sides. Most of that flatness gone, but we're a little uneven. So what's happening here is I've got more roundedness on this side than over here, and that's just due to the way I'm holding the fin and applying pressure. So I just need to change how I'm holding things.
Okay, pretty much the center now is tapered. Gonna even that out. That looks pretty close to even in cross section. Okay, so I'm going to do that to the other three fins off camera and then I'll come back. Now, to do the sanding sealing, you're going to need a piece of corrugated cardboard and some straight pins. Uh, and in this case, what I'm using is a, a makeshift rocket stand, uh, but it has a corrugated base, so that's the, the plan there. The sanding sealer I'm using is a water-based polyurethane. And you can get this at most home stores and hardware stores under various brands. Now for the pins, what we're going to do is put these into the root edge of our fins. It only needs to go in a few millimeters and make sure you don't poke through the sides and into your fingers. Um, you can use a paintbrush or just a, a cotton applicator like this. And all we're going to do is just spread this across the entire fin. Try to avoid getting sanding sealer on the root edge. If you do, you can just sand it off later. All right, well, there's no particular finesse to this. Just go ahead and cover the entire surface. Right. Do make sure you get the tip and trailing edges as well. These tend to be the most porous parts of the fin. All right. And then we'll get the other face. Okay. And then the the pin here allows us to place this in that corrugated cardboard and this allows it to dry. Now as it dries, if you see drips accumulating, just take your applicator and brush those off. Otherwise you'll be able to do it um, after they're dry. So the idea here is you let this dry for about an hour, um, give it a light sanding with um, 220 grit sandpaper. And then, if that's enough for you, you can go on to mounting the fins. Though I usually do at least two coats of this with sanding in between. And if you have particular porous uh, wood here, you may even need three or four coats. And part of that is just personal preference. So I'm going to do the other three of these fins off camera. And I'll come back after they've all been sanded and have been through multiple coats. My fins have been sealed and now I just need to do a final sanding on them. I'm using 220 grit sandpaper and basically all we're doing here is knocking down anything that's sticking up. So the most obvious is if you have little blobs of sanding sealers sticking up, simply sand those down. Okay, make sure you sand the root edge flat. And again, you may have little bits of sanding sealer on there. Um, I'm, on mine, I'm sanding the trailing edge flat and the, root, the uh, tip edge flat. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and taper those, you can do so. Okay, and then I'm just going to do some more here, get the other face. Okay, now at this point, um, you don't want to be sanding all the way down to bare wood. You should see some little glossy spots in there, and that's simply where it is still filling in the wood grain. Okay, I did two coats with mine. Um, some people like to do even more and then sand in between each one, so that, that's a matter of preference on just how smooth you want your fins to get. Um, I'm also going to do a little bit more rounding on my leading edge. Again, just to make sure that I don't have blobs of sanding sealer that might actually um, be unaerodynamic. Alright, so that's about the way it looks before it goes on. 
and I'm going to do the other three fins off camera and then come back.